Hi, I'm John DeVore. Welcome to the DeVore Fidelity YouTube channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about some of the manufacturing processes that go into specifically the bronze parts that are part of the Rangitan O reference. We've gotten quite good at our traditional cabinet making. So sourcing the materials for our cabinets, getting veneers and, and pair matching all of those, tracking them through finish and, and building them up and all, got, all that kind of thing. We've had a lot of practice doing that over the, over the years. But when it came to the OREF project, I wanted to push things further. And a lot of this stuff was pushed outside of our comfort zone here at DeVore Fidelity. In experiments that I've been doing for over 10 years now, incorporating different materials into our drivers. Um, so for example, bronze, uh, into tweeter horns and mounting flanges, and even bronze into the uh, woofer baskets themselves, I realized that it really did make a considerable difference. It was better sounding, the material behaved better, structurally it was more sound, and aesthetically it was beautiful. And so pretty early on in the project, I realized that I needed to start to investigate how this stuff gets made because these are because nothing here is even remotely off the shelf. <laughs> I knew pretty early on that I wanted to investigate casting for a few reasons. One, casting can make a beautiful part. You can see while the front is machined quite smooth and has a really nice uh, high-end finish on it, the basket itself has a really beautiful light pebbly texture to it. And that texture comes from the sand casting process. Uh, and the other reason is efficiency. The other ways of making a big metal part like this, one would be to assemble it from lots of other parts like rods and plates and stuff like that and screw it all together. But that's nowhere near as structurally sound and it has a ton of limitations in terms of the shape that you can end up with. And the other way of doing it is to start with a giant block of material and machine out everything that you're not going to use. But in the case, certainly of the speaker basket, the vast majority of material here is empty space. So if I start with the block that this speaker basket will fit inside completely, 99% of that block of material is machined away as waste and at best is recycled. And so there's enormous inefficiencies there and I just didn't want to do something like that. So the first prototypes we did castings with a foundry in Pennsylvania. Since these were really more like a first trial balloon, almost more of a proof of concept, I wanted to make sure that it did work. I wanted to make sure that it was possible to make these drivers structurally sound. And I wanted to be able to hear them compared to their cast zinc counterparts. So we got the parts, they were extremely rough looking, but it was possible to machine them down to the tolerances needed to build the drivers on them. We built them, listened to them, and the end results were even better than I was hoping. So I knew the direction that I wanted to go. But again, the problem became our expertise. At around this time, I met Christopher Hildebrandt, who was the owner of Tectonics Design Group, and who was just entering the hi-fi market with his offshoot brand, Fern and Roby. He was really intrigued in the project and had in fact incorporated bronze into a couple of his turntable platters. And it became clear to me that he was the right person to spearhead the manufacturing part of getting all these various components that I was designing built. The casting process begins with designing and manufacturing what's called a pattern. A pattern is actually a metal stamper that will make the molds that will receive the molten bronze. And what we used was called, is what's called a match plate stamper. The mash plate stamper was then loaded into a, an automated mold making machine, which takes that pattern, puts it into a hopper, fills the hopper with the sand casting material. And this is a mixture of clay, sand, coal dust, and a certain amount of moisture that is compressed so that it makes an accurate impression of that pattern. And you end up with the two piece sand cast mold. Meanwhile, the specific recipe for my bronze alloy is being prepared and melted down into a liquid in a crucible. The crucible is brought over to the sand mold. The liquid bronze alloy is poured into a hole at the top of the mold. 
and it feeds through a web of openings called the gating into what is the actual mold for the part itself. That fills up, it cools down. The sand material of the mold is then broken off on these giant shaking tables and the raw bronze casts are pulled out. All that sand mold material is then brought into another material where it is recycled and reused. The casting process that we used is actually called the green line casting process in that that mold material is reused over and over and there's very little waste. And these basket molding patterns that we made also included machining blanks so that we could make the other parts like the tweeter horns and flanges out of the same alloy. So as the bronze flowed into the basket mold, it also flowed and made these cool bronze pucks out of which we would machine these. The only bronze parts that didn't come from that foundry in Indiana are the base reflex port tubes. We knew we needed the same alloy. We knew we weren't going to be able to find just a standard pipe or even bar stock the right size that we could just machine these out of. And so we had to go to another foundry that specializes in these, con in these enormous continuously cast extruded pipes. And we had thousands of pounds of bronze pipe made that we then cut to size and machined to finish. And then the rough bronze castings are taken from the foundry in Indiana to tectonics down in Virginia, where all final machining and finishing is done. And that's done in these massive vertical milling machines, which are capable of machining through bronze as though it was room temperature butter. And it is a joy to behold. <laughs> There is sort of a surreal gracefulness when you watch these processes that is completely incongruous when you realize that the enormous forces that are required to machine this bronze as though it was room temperature butter. <laughs> So again, thanks to the guys at Ball Brass Foundry in Indiana, and thanks again to Christopher and his team at Tectonics down in Virginia for not only making all these parts a reality, but also for shooting the footage that I got to chop into these clips for you. I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into old school American manufacturing, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.